Hello everyone, I hope you're having the greatest of days today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to cover even more of the worst bars to be featured on Bar Rescue and reveal all they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys. The Airliner For a season 6 episode, John Taffer heads over to the airliner in Los Angeles, California to rescue it from closure. Owned by Luis Quiroz, who worked his way up from being a dishwasher, he converted the place into a Latin jazz bar which was pretty successful in the beginning. Making as much as $60,000 a month, things slowed down after the first year, so Quiroz decided to let in all genres of music. Booking a wide variety of bands, from death metal to folk, the owner tried everything to pay the bills. Unfortunately, they're only losing money on a monthly basis, have a filthy kitchen, and run out of stock frequently, which is why they're months away from closing down. Not knowing what else to do, the owner called out to Taffer and his team for some much needed help. Upon his eventual arrival with expert mixologist Phil Wills and chef Michael Ferrero, they point out that the exterior is actually pretty nice since it's vintage and historic. Hoping to get a better idea of the customer experience, Taffer sends in a band of four musicians for recon. Once they enter, they're greeted by the general manager Nadia, who expresses that they don't have a cocktail menu but presents the specials. Other than the fact that the drinks they ordered ended up tasting awful, Nadia made tons of mistakes making their orders and didn't understand how to use some of the tools. Hungry, the spies order some nachos and are given a number since they're expected to collect their food when the chef yells out their order. Inside the kitchen, the fryer seems to be making a very loud noise which can be heard from the bar, which horrifies Taffer and his team since it's a fire hazard. What's more, the cook is being extremely unsanitary and seems to be cutting corners when preparing the meals. After the spies pick up their nachos, they point out that the cheese isn't even real and tastes dreadful. Having seen enough, Taffer confronts the staff and demands that they clean the fryer before the next day. Coming back the following day, Taffer meets with the airliner team to get to the bottom of the bar's problems. In short, the staff complain about receiving inconsistent pay, that the owner doesn't give them the support they need, and that he barely cares about how his bar is falling apart. Later on, after some close training with Taffer's experts, the bar rescue host holds a stress test to see how the staff does. Overall, the bar was overwhelmed with the influx of patrons and many complained about the food collection process. Fast forward to the end of the episode after Taffer has a chat with the owner and gets him to wake up, as well as revamps the bar's interior giving it a modern spin, the airliner was given the second chance it needed. Post bar rescue, the owner reported a 10% increase in sales after Taffer left and Kiroz became more hands-on at the bar. Despite being one of the most careless owners on the show, this is one of the few rescues that is still open to this day. Although, it's important to note that it's being run by new owners, which is probably the only reason why it's still standing. Molly Malone's In a season 4 episode, John Taffer pays a visit to the failing Molly Malone's to bring it back on its feet. Owned by Bob Isaacson, he purchased the bar back in 2006 with the generous help of his parents. Though, things have been rough from the get-go with the bar losing close to $6,000 a month. Struggling to manage the bar, Isaacson decided to call in his girlfriend Rain to help out, but the stress has only put a strain on their relationship. Considering that the business was months away from closing down and that Isaacson's relationship was on the rocks, he decided to call out the Taffer for some help. When he finally arrives with his experts, they notice that the bar is in disrepair and resembles anything but an Irish bar. Watching at a distance, Taffer and his team catch the bartenders playing pool and slouching around instead of doing their job. The only person who seems to be doing a good job is the cook Chris who's making some delicious looking burgers. That aside, things get even worse when Taffer notices some of the bar staff being abusive to one another in front of the customers. Things escalate to the point that two bartenders named Tara and Danielle get into a fight and the owner does absolutely nothing to stop them. Fed up with the absolute chaos, the bar rescue host heads into the establishment and stands idle for a while before being spotted. Once he's finally acknowledged, both Tara and Danielle frantically try to explain why they were fighting but Taffer doesn't want to hear any of it and reprimands Isaacson for being so careless. Leaving and returning the following day, Taffer holds a staff meeting to get a better understanding of the issues at hand. One important detail that's brought up is that Rain gave up her life for her partner missing out on her education and has been helping him out for the last several years. She points out that if Isaacson doesn't turn things around and continues to be so negligent, she is going to leave. Hoping to turn things around, Taffer starts by first introducing the staff to his experts who would teach them how to improve their cooking and mixing skills alike. Following some close training with the bar's employees, the famous rescuer decides to hold a stress test to see how they perform. Not only was everything being sent out at a snail's pace, but the bartenders didn't know what they were doing. At the very least, even though Isaacson was flustered and uncertain about how to command his team, he somewhat came around near the end, which impressed Rain greatly. Meeting with the owner and his girlfriend the following day, Isaacson promises that he'll be more supportive moving forward. Through even more training with the staff and discussing a new direction for the bar with the Molly Malone's team, Taffer was finally ready to move into the renovations. Starting first by renaming the place the Waypoint Saloon, the exterior was given a western theme with vibrant colors while the interior received a modernized saloon style setup. 
Receiving tons of new equipment including three two-touch POS systems and a turbo tap system, the bar was finally reborn. Weeks after the taping of this episode, the owner revealed that the bar's food sales are up by 40% while the drink sales rose up by 25%. Thankfully, the two bartenders who kept feuding throughout the episode, Tara and Danielle, are on much better terms. Best of all though, thanks to Isaacson's genuine desire to improve, he and his partner tied the knot and are living happily together. You can pay this bar a visit if you'd like since it's still open to this day with pretty solid reviews. Toucan's Oceanside Bar As our final entry, we're going to discuss a bar that John Taffer attempted to rescue called Toucan's Oceanside Bar. Opened by John Frank alongside his friend Jamie Hawks in 2004, the bar managed to survive two hurricanes and stay successful through it all. Although things took a turn for the worse when Hawks tragically lost his son since the grief completely shifted his behavior. Lashing out at everyone including his best friend which, which put a strain on their relationship, things have only gone downhill. Not only is the bar completely neglected, but the employees don't know who to follow so they do whatever they please. Since the business was $250,000 in debt and Hawks and Frank were on the verge of losing their friendship, the owners called out to Taffer for some aid. Unlike with most episodes, Taffer and his experts decided to perform the recon themselves, but they did bring 60 patrons along with them to test things out. Upon entering, the famous rescuer immediately notices how the interior is not fit for a beach environment since it had white walls, Irish bar chairs, and retro diner tables. Taffer and his team then ordered everything on the menu, but the bartenders weren't even familiar with how to make some of the drinks they sold. As the orders piled on, Taffer's expert chef Nick Liberato headed into the kitchen and was shocked to see that there was only one person working there. Frantically trying to keep up, the bar chef Logan cooked several orders in a very unsanitary environment until he finally cracked under pressure and left his job. In terms of the bar area, expert mixologist Kyle Mercado was disgusted to find tons of mold covering the equipment and was horrified to see one of the bartenders literally give away booze. Forcing the staff to clean everything up, Taffer leaves and returns the following day and the place is a lot more presentable than before. Considering the fact that the bartenders didn't know how to make some of the drinks on their own menu, Mercado taught them how to do those. On the other hand, Chef Liberato taught Logan as well as Hawks how to properly open oysters so they maintain their juiciness, which they weren't doing. After some close training with the staff, Taffer hoped to put their skills to the test by inviting a bunch of customers yet again. Overall, there was quite a bit of improvement, especially with a bartender named Kelly who was previously giving away drinks for free, but the same couldn't be said about the owners. They refused to communicate with each other and were so neglectful of the bar that they failed to notice that they had a rat infestation. Fast forward to near the end of the episode, the famous rescuer decided to rename the place to Bonnie and Reed's, which was a reference to two famous pirates named Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed. Surprisingly, the bar is still open to this day, but it currently goes by the name Bonnie and Reed's Toucan Hideout, which is a fusion of both names. The place has pretty good reviews, with many praising the food and drinks, but others complaining about the poor service quality. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.